Welcome to Model Engineering for Beginners. This is part 18, a simply made tool adapter to make threading quicker. When cutting threads using a lathe you have two options. You can either use the screw cutting equipment built into the lathe, and that needs a little bit of mathematics, special tools and a good bit of experience, or you can use a simple die holder. For cutting threads on small shafts in the lathe I would normally use a tailstock die holder. And that, as the name would suggest, is a die holder that fits in the tailstock and holds the die securely. What I'm doing at the moment, by the way, is just making a brass plug which fits in the end of the Morse taper number 2 in the die holder. This is the part that holds the die in alignment with the chuck. And I'm doing this because on my other lathe, the larger of the two, this die holder didn't always eject properly. But now it has this small piece of brass in the end which I'm fitting in with some Loctite equivalent. It will always eject as I turn the handle to retract the quill on the tailstock. Once the retaining compound had cured, I put the parallel part of the shank in the chuck and turned down the brass, followed by a quick touch with a file. A major health and safety warning. I use a file to file the ends like this very frequently, but your file must have a handle. Very important. Your file must have a substantial handle, otherwise this can happen. This was sent in by a viewer who actually was filing in the lathe. The lathe caught the file and it stuck in his hand. You can see just how dangerous things can be when using machine tools. Always treat them with great respect because they will harm you if you give them a chance. And always make sure that the file you use in the lathe has a handle fitted. What I need to do now is make a sliding sleeve that slides on this tailstock die holder mounting. So using my bandsaw, I cut off a short length of mild steel. This is quite rusty, but it's not rusty once you start turning it. And the carbide tip that I'm using is not very sharp, but it will be okay for the first cuts, just to clean up the bar. When machining in the lathe, if you're using either rusty steel like this, or if you're using rough castings, always try and machine one end of the casting to get rid of the roughness, and then hold it in the chuck by the end that you've just machined. From a beginner's point of view, it's very easy to lose concentration and do it wrong. Like this, for instance. I sort of went into autopilot mode and drilled the end of the part. Then I realised I hadn't turned it round. So I turned it round in the chuck, centre drilled the end and fitted a live centre. This part of the piece of steel is a long way from the chuck jaws. So without the centre in place, it would wander about and I wouldn't get a true cut. Here I'm removing the rusty part. And I'm going back and forth a couple of times with the lathe tool, and then I let it go all the way down. By the way, you will notice the lubricant on the work. What is it? It is steam oil. I use steam oil for quite a few applications in my workshop. I dilute it with machine oil and rapeseed oil as a general purpose lubricant. And the mix on this is 50% 1000 grade steam oil, which is very thick and sticky. Which coincidentally, is just like a girlfriend that I once had. 25% machine oil and 25% rapeseed oil that you get from the supermarket. Rapeseed oil is also known as canola oil. Currently, I'm trying a reamer down the center. This is a 5H reamer, but unfortunately, the shaft that I'm going to use from my existing tailstock die holder to support this sleeve is metric. You will notice that now that the end of the bar is not supported, it's moving around a little bit. This is not a high precision part, so that really doesn't matter. And in this clip, I'm showing how I'm using a boring bar to finally size the internal dimension. And that's just the sort of fit that I need. Not too tight and not too slack, and it's too soon for another girlfriend joke. Just in case you don't know what this is, this is called a knurling tool. I'll put the spelling on screen. As you'll see very shortly, this knurling tool makes a pattern on the piece of steel. And by knurling the piece of steel, it makes it much easier to hold in your hand without dropping it on the floor. Two of the three existing tailstock die holders that I have are not knurled in the slightest, and I drop them on the floor quite a lot because my hands are often oily, and this in combination with the smooth surface of the tailstock die holder makes it very easy for the tailstock die holder to slip through your fingers and fall on the floor, usually striking my big toe on the way there. Knurling is a very slow process. It's best to run the lathe in back gear to slow it down. And in this clip, the video is running at 800%, eight times normal speed. 
I often speed up operations like this because the video would just be too long and really, really boring. The good news is I'm nearly at the end of the job. All I need to do now is clean up each end of the part. And this part of the job is strangely satisfying. This is not really necessary, but it will make it look like a piece of professional equipment. After completing the cleanup of this end, I turned the part round in the chuck. And as you can see, I fitted the live center in place because this end of the work needs to be accurately machined. And the live center makes sure that the end of this piece of metal cannot move. The lathe is not in back gear at the moment and the video is running at 800% again, eight times normal speed. I keep removing the live center and using the die holder as a gauge. One final very fine cut does the job. In this clip, I'm hoping you'll be able to see the principle of operation. The commercial die holder presses onto the end of my part, which in turn fits on the existing die holder shaft. And here we have a tail slot die holder of sorts. The technique for using this is going to be different to a normal die holder because I will have to hold onto the part that I've made and simultaneously rotate this part as I turn the die stock with the long handles to cut the thread on the part in the chuck. If you decide to copy this idea, there's no problem with that at all. It's a good exercise in plane turning, knurling and boring. At this point I'd just like to say I'm not going to get rid of my tailstock die holders and I do have some more dies in small drawers in a cabinet on the top of the lathe. But threading with this system is certainly quicker. No more looking for Allen keys. I just put a pre-loaded die holder on the end of the adapter. The adapter fits on the shaft in the tailstock and off we go. That's it for this one, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.